Everybody talking about how great Al Qaeda is. I'll tell you what, I'm not happy with them. If weak politicians want to say, and the Democrats in this case, if they want to gear their wagons around these four people, I think they're going to have a very tough election because I don't think the people of the United States will stand for it. Oh, Trump puts it in. <laughs> Lapel. Good moment. Dramatic effect. Well, check out the approval numbers of Omar and AOC from that same internal Democrat poll that was on Axios today. Ooh, the swing voters. Ouch. Doesn't look good. So, yes, the president made an unforced error. I would say that. And that tweet telling the women to go back to places from which they came. Three of the four were born in America. But the idea that he's hitting them because they're people or women of color is just absurd. I mean, who doesn't Trump hit? I mean, he was hitting Paul Ryan last week. He's hitting them because their views, in his mind, and I think the mind of millions of Americans, are insanely radical. If anyone sounded racist over the weekend, it was AOC posse member Congresswoman Ayanna Presley. She thinks that any minority who doesn't think like she does is inauthentic and not even worth having part of the conversation. If you are not prepared to come to that table and to represent that voice, don't come. Because we don't need any more brown faces that don't want to be a brown voice. We don't need black faces that don't want to be a black voice. We don't need Muslims that don't want to be a Muslim voice. We don't need queers that don't want to be a queer voice. Come on, speak it. Uh, I that should have gotten the attention this weekend, that comment. Well, Speaker Pelosi has seen those internal polling numbers and on, on those women, and she knows that their radical views are the kiss of death for the 2020 Democrats. She has to. Been around a long time. Yet because Trump hit them and continued today, she had to chime in to defend the congresswoman. Now, she didn't use their names, but that's what she was getting at. And she echoed their racial drumbeat, making the you know, make America great again. She made the little play on that. Well, this allowed Trump to lump Pelosi and AO3, AOC plus three together and make a play for disaffected Democrats. They hate our country. They hate it, I think, with a passion. Now, it's possible I'm wrong. The voter will decide. I do not believe this is good for the Democrat Party. Certainly, it's not the party that I've known over the years. We live in a society and govern in a body that might value the life of a dog more than they value the life of a child who might not look like theirs. If you're not happy here, you can leave. And that's what I say all the time. That's what I said in a tweet, which I guess some people think is controversial. A lot of people love it, by the way. These are people that, in my opinion, hate our country. And today... And today, AOC plus three up the ante, doubling down on a frenzy of racial politics and far-left bromides. This is the agenda of white nationalists. Whether it is happening in chat rooms or it's happening on national TV, and now it's reached the White House garden. That we are more than four people. We ran on a mandate to advocate for and to represent those ignored, left out, and left behind. Our squad is big. We remain focused on holding him accountable to the laws of this land and accountable to the American people. He does not know how to defend his policies. So what he does is attack us personally. Well, this all plays into Trump's hands. If the election ends up being a choice between peace and prosperity and the socialism and open borders of the radical squad, Trump could win 45 states. We have the best economy of the past 50 years. It's the envy of the entire world. Trump's betting that Americans will choose that over the identity politics and radicalism of AOC and now her fellow Democrat travelers. And that's the angle.